driving around, you see some of the church signs sometimes, and we saw a good one the other day. If you only pray when you're in trouble, then you're in trouble. Get it? <laughs> so pray how much? All the time. You know, I think about it when you're, you know, all who are thirsty come. You know, on a hot day like today, it's going to be 100 degrees. If you're outside, you're going to get thirsty. But if you think, well, when I get thirsty, I'll go over to that well and get some water. Well, sometimes wells dry up. So if you didn't come prepared, already drinking some before you even came out that day, already hydrated, you wait till it's time that you're really thirsty, sometimes you can't even make it to that well. You die, you go down. So drink continuously and be ready. All right, amen. All right, we'll just pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we just ask that you... Guide us each and every day, Lord, and let not anything come out of our lips that will cause some other man to fall, Lord, but just to edify him. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm going to call this message, Don't Lose Your Testimony. And I want you all to pay attention because your testimony is going to be important. It is important. And it's not quite what you're thinking. It goes a little deeper. I'll tell you a quick story. I was at a man's house. Now, you think you got problems. This man's renting a house, but yet has to still sell his house. And his mortgage isn't $300. It's not $1,500. It's $5,000 a month. He got a big problem. So he's trying to get everything ready to sell, and, and we're working on the house. And we're, out, we're outside talking one day, and he, he was talking about something and I shared with him a little bit of my story of, you know, my car, I had to fix it, transmission, and a year and a half later, it, it, it broke on me. And, you know, I went down to talk to the man and shared with him my opinion about the situation and expected some, some grace or some understanding, and I got nothing. Now, you know, I was in my rights to say, look now, fella, but you know what popped in my head? Don't lose your testimony. Don't lose your testimony. So I said, all right, well, I thank you for your time. I shook his hand and I left. Now he's got to deal with himself. See, it's off of me. So I'm talking to the man and I, I shared that with him. He goes, you know, and this guy's a Christian. He's been a Christian a long time. He goes, I never even heard that. Don't lose your testimony. I'm going to remember that. And he did. We're talking about a week later, I uncovered a problem in his house, minor problem, something that could have been swept under the rug. Well, just ignore that. But he said, you know what, Charles, I want you to fix that because I remember what you said, and I don't want that little bitty fix, that little bitty repair to cause me to lose my testimony. And he said, you do whatever you have to do to fix it because I remember what you said, and I don't want to lose my testimony over one simple repair to this house. So I give glory to God for that. He was listening. <clears throat> Let's go, Willie, being amplified to John 17. We'll start out with verse 6. We're going to go a little while on that one. So John 17, verse 6. Now, Jesus is praying on behalf of his disciples. He's praying to God. And we're going to start out here. He says, I have manifested your name. I have revealed your very self, your real self, to the people whom have, you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have obeyed and kept your word. Verse 7. Now, at last... They know and understand that all you have given me belongs to you and is really and truly yours. There's a big one. When you can get to where you know and understand that everything you have, everything belongs to God. 
everything. Number eight, for the uttered words that you gave me, I have given them, and they have received and accepted them. There's another big one. They received and accepted them and have come to know positively and in reality to believe with absolute assurance that I came forth from your presence and they have believed and are convinced that you died. I'm sorry, you did send me. They came to know positively. Absolute assurance. Are you there? I'm there. I believe in this Bible with every part of my being. And it is 100% accurate and true. My thoughts might not be on board. Sometimes my emotions, my opinion. But me, I'm wrong. And this is right. So I have absolute assurance that God's word prevails over everything. Everything. What is your testimony? Does God's word prevail in your life? See, we're talking about testimony. Not just how I got saved, but what you doing now. What do you believe in? What is your testimony? Number nine. I am praying for them. I am not praying or requesting for the world, but for those you have given me, for they belong to you. Number 10, all things that are mine are yours, and all things that are yours belong to me, and I am glorified through them. They have done me honor, in them my glory is achieved. Verse 11, and now I am no more in the world, but these are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, keep in your name and the knowledge of yourself those whom you have given me, that they may be as one as we are. Well, I tell you what, I'd like Jesus to be praying for me. And he is. He was praying for his disciples, but you know what? He prays for you this earnestly. Now, some people can't get that. Well, no, I'm just here to serve Jesus. Yeah, you are. But Jesus is praying. He's your advocate, man. He's on your side. He's lifting you up. He's edifying you. Number 12. While I was with them, I kept and preserved them in your name, in the knowledge and worship of you. Those you have given me, I guarded and protected. And not one of them has perished or lost except the son of perdition. Wow. He kept them. And not one of them is lost except the son of perdition. Judas Iscariot, the one who is now doomed to destruction, destined to be lost, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Why did he keep them? That the scripture might be fulfilled. Why will he keep you? Right. When you don't think you have a part in anything, you have a part in it. Why are you so mindful of me, Lord? Because see, child, through you, my scripture is going to be fulfilled. Through you, my scripture is going to be fulfilled. So don't think you don't have a part in this. You have a part. Sometimes we don't know what that part is, but you just keep on working. You just keep on doing what you're supposed to do. Because you don't know the part that you're playing in that scripture being fulfilled. He kept them. And I am now coming to you. I say these things while I am still in the world, so that my joy may be made full and complete and perfect in them that they may experience my delight fulfilled in them, that my enjoyment may be perfected in their own souls, that they may have my gladness with them, filling their hearts. Again, boy, wouldn't you like Jesus praying for you that way? Man, well, he is. He, he does. Did. 
I have given and delivered to them your word, message, and the world has hated them. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Because they are not of the world, do not belong to the world, just as I am not of this world. I do not ask that you will take them out of the world, but that you will keep and protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, worldly or belonging to the world, just as I am not of the world. So then he says, so sanctify, purify, consecrate, separate them for yourself. Make them holy by the truth. Your word is the truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And so for their sake and on their behalf, I sanctify, dedicate, consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified, dedicated, consecrated, made holy in the truth. Woo, man. I think I want to be one of these disciples. Yeah, yeah, we are disciples. You mean Jesus is praying for me that way? Wow, and you think you got problems. You got no problems? Sure, you got situations, you got circumstances, but who doesn't? I mean, you ain't the only one. You ain't going through something no one else isn't. It's just like my wife said, sickness, what is sickness? Quit paying so much attention to sickness. And pay attention to your victory. Cancer. What is cancer? Who cares what cancer is? Victory is what's important. The victory is the important thing. Whatever your disease is, is that disease more important than your victory? Is it predominant in your life? You're going to walk around, well, I guess I'm so-and-so. No, you're not. You're a child of the one true God. The world wants to cling on to your sickness. Let them have it. You hang out with the cancer, I'm going over here to the glory land. Let them have it. You take my blindness, I'm going over here because I can see you over here. Live it out. And I'm going to tell you something else. We all like to get on the praying bandwagon. Oh, let me pray for you about that. But you know what? We forget about ourselves. You pray for yourself. Build yourself up. You want to help somebody? Get yourself built up. Get yourself built up. Lord, I'm going to be selfish for a minute which is a good selfish, I'm going to pray for myself. So I don't have to be selfish out in the world. I can go give it to somebody else. Act this thing out now. What is your testimony? Now he prayed for the disciples, but there's a part too for us. Exactly right. He don't like our testimony. He don't want to hear your testimony. That's why you need to tell people your testimony. We're going to go into verse 20. Neither for these alone do I pray. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all those who will ever come to believe in, trust in, cling to, rely on me through their word and teaching. See? It ain't just for the disciples. It's not just for the preacher. It's just not for the clergy. It's for you and me and everybody who says, Lord, I want you in my life. Number 21, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given to me, that they may be one, even as we are one. 
I in them and you in me in order that they may become one and perfectly united. There's a lot of unity going on in these scriptures. That the world may know and definitely recognize that you sent me and that you have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have entrusted to me as your gift to me may be with me where I am so that they may see my glory which you have given me, your love gift to me. And you love me before the foundation of the world. O just and righteous Father, although the world has not known you and has failed to recognize you and has never acknowledged you, I have known you continually, and these men understand and know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them and revealed your character and your very self, and I will continue to make known to you you know, to the love that which you have bestowed upon me may be in them, felt in their hearts, and that I myself may be in them. Woo! Boy! Yeah! So it ain't just for the disciples, huh? It's for me! He wants us to be part of him. One with us, Father. So they may be united with us. Be one of us. Well, let me read you a little definition I pulled up on the Christian testimony. A Christian testimony is given when Christians relate how we came to know the God of the Bible through the moving of his Holy Spirit in our hearts. Most commonly, we are sharing how we became Christians by God's miraculous intervention and work in our lives through specific events. I always think of Paul's conversion. <sighs> Blinded him. But now I see. Often we can only see that in hindsight, but sharing that experience is vital. Listen to this now. Also, when giving this testimony, a sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ is always a necessity. See, if you just tell someone, hey, yesterday I learned how to ride a bike, well, that's good. But then I got on a bike and I rode to the corner, then I rode to the store. You want to tell them more, right? Tell them about what you're doing with it. What is the gospel? Yeah, I got saved, but now that I'm saved, let me tell you something about this Jesus and give them your testimony. Often, we can only see that in hindsight, but sharing the experience is vital. Again, also when given this testimony, share the gospel. Though we can include specific information about how we came to accept Christ as Savior, those details should not be the focus of the testimony. The focus should be about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Sure, your testimony is important and we want to hear it, but what's the main focus? It just said it, about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Yes. A Christian testimony should not end with the conversion experience, but should also include the ways in which the Lord has worked in our lives to sanctify us for his service. So you tell someone you're saved, and yeah, and I believe in God and the gospel. They ain't getting much out of that. But if you tell them how Jesus is working through you, sanctifying you, using you for his good pleasure, then they start to listen a little bit. Well, what do you mean? You mean i got to give something up? To, oh, yeah, let me tell you what I've given up. I, and you work them in, see? you got to tell them your testimony. That's your testimony. You know, you get in a car and you drive from point A to point B. It don't matter what car you took there. It matters about being at point B. Yeah, here's my testimony of how I got here, but now that I'm here, let's talk about being here. Get into the real testimony. As an example, a testimony could include how how he brought us through a difficult time in our life, such as a loss or some sort of severe illness, and built our faith in him through that experience. 
we should also be able to describe the continual process by which this now dwells us and dwells us, leads, guides, molds, and shapes us into mature Christians. Again, the focus should be on the Lord and his faithfulness and should include at least one verse that speaks of faithfulness. So think about that when you're giving your testimony. How can you share with him? And this quoted, this uh, portion I read quoted Psalms 18. Psalms 18, verse 2. And it says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my keen and firm strength, in whom I will trust and take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Man, if you got that going on your side, you don't need much else, do you? Hey, you got some army over there, but let me tell you what I got over here. Down to verse 6. In my distress... When seemingly closed in, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, which is his heavenly dwelling place, and my cry came before him into his very ears. A God loves you so much, right into his ears. You know, we got friends we can talk to, but sometimes they'll plug their ears up. But God says, uh uh-uh, uh, I hear you. It's going right into my ear. I'm plugged in. I'm listening to you. I'm desiring to hear you. I want to hear you. My testimony. What is your testimony? So as we think about it, you should be living out your testimony. It's not something you just hang on a coat rack and go, well, there's my testimony. Isn't that nice, that testimony over there? You see it? It's good, isn't it? And that's where we leave it. Don't lose your testimony. The world wants you to lose it and forget about it and never pick it back up. The devil sure don't want you to have it. But it's yours. And you have to use it. Use your testimony. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, Willie, chapter 6, verse 11 through 18. 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through 18. All right, here we go. Our mouth is open to you, Corinthians. We are hiding nothing, keeping nothing back, and our heart is expanded wide for you. There is no lack of room for you in our hearts, but you lack room in your own affections for us. By way of return, then, do this for me. I speak to you as children, open wide your hearts also to us. All right, now catch this now, verse 14. You ready? Don't lose your testimony. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mismatched alliances with them or come under a different yoke with them. Huh. It doesn't say give in to your feelings. Give in to your emotions. Give in to what your neighbors think. Give in to what that television is telling you. It doesn't say that. It says, do not make alliances with them or come under different yoke with them. Inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership have right living and right standing with God with iniquity and lawlessness? Or how can light have fellowship with darkness? So many of us are walking in the light and flirting with darkness. You can't do that. That darkness will end up putting that light out if you keep doing that. Number 15. What harmony can there be between Christ and Belial, the devil? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? 
Now listen, this scripture isn't saying don't love your neighbor, don't be open, but you cannot be in agreement with them. You cannot give in to what CNN tells you to give in to. You can't give in to what new age theory of believing tells you to give in to. My God has not changed a single word. He's not swayed by public opinion. His word is consistent and true. What agreement, in verse 16, what agreement can there be between a temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, even as God said, I will dwell in and with and among them, and I will walk in and with and among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. 17. So come out from among unbelievers. Quit flirting with the world. You either with us or you against us. Separate yourselves from them, says the Lord, and touch not any unclean thing. Then I will receive you kindly and treat you with favor. Who wants to be treated with favor? Well, that's what the scripture just said then. Let me read it again. So come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord, and, and touch not any unclean thing. And now if you do that, the Lord says, then I will receive you kindly and treat you with favor. Well, Lord, I don't know why things aren't going good in my life. I see Johnny over there. He gets it all. Maybe Johnny ain't touching unclean things. Maybe he's being an obedient vessel. Maybe Johnny knows where his testimony is and hadn't lost it. Verse 18, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Mm. So now, here's a therefore, Pastor Bob. You like them therefore. So verse 1, chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, since these great promises are ours, beloved. In other words, hey, since all you just heard is true, why don't you get on up and let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates and defiles body and spirit and bring our consecration to completeness in the reverential fear of God? Why don't you just get up and do it? Quit flirting with the world. Just go on to the next phase. Make a decision. What's your testimony? The world's point of view? Let me tell you the trap that most pastors and Christians get into with today's world. Ready? What do you think about homosexuality? You want me to give you my answer? I don't think nothing of it. Ain't no such a thing. See, there's one way God made us, and that's it. Man and woman reproduce to make children. Now you have a will, and you can do all kind of behaviors with it, and all kind of actions, but that don't make it right. And I don't care what your opinion thinks about it, or says about it. Well, what do you think about adultery? I don't think nothing about it. See, God said, if I marry that woman, you better be committed to her. Because if you're not committed to her, and you go out and sneak around the corner, you're sneaking out on me, and I'm going to deal with you, boy, and you're going to have a lot to pay for. Huh. Oh. Yeah, what do you think about all that? Well, what do you think about Johnny and Susie moving in together? I don't think nothing about it. 
What I know about it is Johnny better ask Susie to marry her, him, if that's who he wants to live with, and then they need to do it God's way or it ain't going to go good with them. Well, you sure are mean, Mr. Ferguson. No, I ain't mean. And I see the pain down the road if you don't do it God's way. Well, what do you know about pain? You got it good, mate. Whew, let me give you my testimony. See, I ain't lost my testimony. I know my testimony. I'm walking God's plan out right now because of my testimony. See, I had a whole family going left. And at 12 years old, I said, God, I don't want to go left. I want to go right. Lead me right. And he grabbed a hold of me when I asked him to. And I ain't looked back. Now my testimony isn't that. My testimony is this. Lord, I'm doing my best to walk out your will in my life. And I know I'm a fleshly man. And I know I make mistakes. And I ain't perfect. And I ain't got it right. But I know the principles. And I'm going to stand by the principles. And when I mess up, I don't, you don't have to grab me. I'll grab myself by the collar and straighten myself out. And when I don't do that, I've got a father over there that can do it. A mother right there. A pastor. i got a wife. I got a son, a daughter. They can all do it. I'm open to them doing it. You can do it. You can do it. Because that's what we're here for, to help each other, right? Not post it on Facebook and desecrate each other, but to come to each other and say, let me help you. Let me pray for you. Let me give you a hug. See, because that's my testimony. My testimony is to build you up. My testimony isn't always just about how I got here, but it's why I'm here. What am I doing with my testimony? What is your testimony? My testimony is I serve a God who loves me, who cares for me, never left me, never forsakes me. And while I serve him in this body on this earth, I'm going to do the best I can, but I'm always looking up. Lord, I'm ready for you. Lord, I'm ready for you. But while I'm here, I'm going to share your word. I'm going to tell people the truth. There is only one God. And your soul is going to live, your spirit is going to live in eternity. One of two places. Heaven or hell. The choice isn't mine. It's not Pastor Bob's. It's not that guy over there. It's yours. He gave you the free will to make a choice. No choice is the choice. Don't be fooled by today's world. Listen, let me tell you something real quick about denominations. It's getting bad with denominations. If someone comes up and says, what denomination are you? Just tell them you're a Christian. Well, what denomination, though? Oh, I'm a Christian. Well, not what denomination? I'm a Christian. See, because denominations want to make rule books about what you should do, how you should do it, what you should wear, how you should serve, what you should be saying when you serve. Da, 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 da. Oh, by the way, we're going to adopt uh, that pastors can be homosexual. See, denominations are going all into the world. They're swimming in the world now. But if you are a gospel-believing tr- Christian, that's your denomination. That's your testimony. My testimony is that I serve God to the best of my ability, and I'm going to abide in Him, and He's going to abide in me, and I'm going to look up the Scriptures when I don't know what to do, and I'm going to follow the Scripture. That's the one I'm following. That's my denomination. You feel what I'm saying to you? What's your testimony? Testimony isn't your denomination. It's not just a trip how you got there. What you doing now? What is your testimony? Pastor Bob likes to do the old man and the new man. What's your testimony? Here I am. I'm Charles over here. You know... Got this girlfriend, and man, it didn't work out, and you know, I just, you know, kind of bummed out about it. Now, six months later, here's Charles again. Yeah, I got this girlfriend, you know, 
She's all, but it just didn't work out. I don't know what's wrong with these girls I pick. You know, so these girls got problems these days. Another six months. You know, this last girlfriend I had, I don't know what happened. You know, time. There's something wrong with you, Charles. It ain't the girls you picking. It's you. You got to get your testimony back, man. What's she doing? See, we always want to put it on somebody else. You the problem, not me. But if I keep choosing these wrong choices, and I don't learn to make a different choice, and I make the same choice again, and I keep going around the mountain, I get the same thing. It's the same thing. Same thing. What's your testimony? That's right. So don't keep making the same silly choices. How will you lose your testimony? Keep on making some silly choices. You won't even know what your testimony was after a while. <laughs> so you won't be there. You know, what's your testimony? Well, you know, that wife, you know, God, boy, that wife is something. I, whoo. Hey, Bob, hey, look, hey, you know that wife of mine, she's, ah, uh, you know, golly. Now, here's the guy over here looking at Charles and listening. I thought Charles had a good testimony. That don't sound like a good testimony. All he's doing over there is yapping about his wife. What kind of testimony does he have? What's he going to tell me about God when I hear him over there yapping about his wife? The one God gave to him. Uh, what's your testimony? See, we can't just say it. We got to do it. We got to live it. You want to be a living testimony. Read by all men. So don't flirt with the world because you will lose your testimony. Does that mean you're not a Christian? No, that doesn't mean that. It can. You can keep going that way until you finally just fall off the cliff. Don't lose your testimony. And don't pick up condemnation. Just get up, wipe yourself off, and get on with it, man. Make a change. You know, my father, I'll never forget this thing with, you know, the cigarettes. Smoking the cigarette. Well, one day he was working on the car and he had the cigarette still in his mouth and it burned his lip. The pack came out in the trash can, the whole thing, every cigarette he could find. He said, what kind of foolish man would I be to keep on fooling with something that would burn me? He don't have to touch that stove again, Pastor Bob. One time, get the feel of that stove once. Keep your hand on it for a minute to make sure you really know it burns. You won't touch it again. But if you wet your finger and touch it, sizzle. Oh, that, did, that wasn't that bad. I can do that again tomorrow. See there? Cover it up all you want. One time you're going to forget to lick your finger, and you're going to put the dry flesh, and woo, that burnt. That got my attention. Yeah. What's your testimony? So we're going to live this testimony out? We're just going to think about it and just say, well, you know, that's how I got saved. Well, what you been doing lately? Huh? Well, I ain't got no more testimony. I, that is my testimony. No, man, that's just how you got here, man. That's just the vehicle you came over here in. Tell us more about your testimony. What's your relationship like with Christ? What you doing for him? Are you living for him? Are you sharing the gospel? Are you telling people the truth when they ask you? See, I haven't raised my hand one time and asked the world their opinion. But they give it to me every day. Every day. Every day. I ain't asked a single one of them. So what are we holding back for? What are you holding back? You have open rights to walk around and say, Lord Jesus, you are God. I love you. Why can't you? Me and Rachel were hiking in Yosemite. Whew, this is a bad one. 
Thanks, Mom. <laughs> we got on this trail. We had to come down this trail along the, along the uh, waterfall, slick. Rachel's got altitude sickness. I wasn't doing this. Oh, man, what am I going to do? I'm coming down the mountain. This Lord, Jesus, mountain. Back. I can't get her on my back. I got to get her off this mountain. You got to help me, Lord. I'm about to knock people over with my hand because I'm praying. That's what came out. Is it was serious. But that was my testimony. They heard the testimony whether they wanted to or not. You know, I got some looks. But they got the testimony. That man's crazy. Yeah. I'm crazy, man. Crazy Christians in this place. But give them your testimony. Don't hold back. God's a good God. He didn't give you a testimony to keep it in your little box. Don't tell nobody unless they ask you now. Let the satellite dish tell everybody the world's view, but don't you say nothing. Don't say nothing. Shh. Tell them. Tell them the good news. It ain't just for you. Man, if it was just for you, you'd be in heaven already. I ain't got no purpose for him. It's just for him. I can bring him on up. No, it's for everybody. Everybody wants that testimony. So live it out. Don't fail. Don't fall for this world's tricks. The world is so skewed right now. Now, look, we still enjoy this world. This, listen, this was given to us. See, as a Christian, we're supposed to be claiming taking authority in this world. Yeah, we know Satan's current position, but you know what? We ain't under Satan's power. We're under God's power. So your testimony. Woo, I'm going to tell you something. See, it's, it, so just, just so you know, that ain't always the easiest thing, okay? When I was younger, Pastor Bob, this pretty girl. Woo, she's pretty. Don't listen, Dad. <laughs> she liked Charles, and Charles, you know, I liked her all right. But one day, she was in a bad way. Charles, do you think I could come and, and stay with you for a while? No. <laughs> no. Well, what do you mean? I thought you liked me. Oh, I like you just fine. But see, I ain't never going to live in a woman until she's my wife. Whoa, 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 what do you mean? I ain't living with no woman until she's my wife. Now, I told that story to some friends of mine, these guys. <laughs> they thought I was crazy, Pastor Bob. <laughs> you know half of them been divorced already? Who was the crazy one? See, they did it the other way. I'll shack up with you first, then I'll fall in love with you later. It don't happen. It don't happen. And again, this isn't condemnation, but this is, get your testimony, okay? Get your testimony right. So yeah, I've been tempted. And boy, if I'd have bit that apple that day, oh man. Oh, yeah, I don't even want to think about it, Miss Susan. Look at the blessing I would have missed out on. See, he had a godly wife in my plan. And I stuck to my guns and didn't give in. Thank God. Whoo, that girl was pretty though, Charles, man. Why didn't you do that? No, I will not was my answer. That was my testimony. So what is your testimony? My father, my natural father died when I was two. My mom had five kids. I was the youngest. That ain't a pretty picture. A lot of bitterness, 
rebellion set in my family, a lot of curses from generations back. I understand he was an alcoholic, not so much drinking every day, but when Friday noon come around, he checked out. My mom would have to run and find him and, and get the check from him so he didn't spend it all that night. I reflect a lot of times, you know, boy, if my dad would have lived, I could have maybe talked to him and got him off of that path. See, I don't know where he is. I don't know. I'm not one of these guys that, you know, oh, you know, he's in heaven now. No, he ain't. If he ain't saved, he ain't there. I don't speak the untruth. I'm speaking the truth. Well, that's your daddy you're talking about. Yeah, I know who he is. But see, that choice was his choice. So I don't know if he's there. I pray that he is. So my testimony is, here's a two-year-old, daddy gone. Five of us sitting at home. What y'all going to do now? The attack of Satan came on in there. Outlook ain't good. My stepdad comes in, to, still a lot of bitterness with the, with the older siblings and just a lot of ways of the world, you know. He ain't your daddy, you ain't got to listen to him. Well, who am I going to listen to then? You? <laughs> Who's going to bring us a loaf of bread? You? Who's going to keep the lights on? You? Oh, they didn't talk about all that he did for us as my stepdad, as a, a man who said, you know what? I love that lady and these five kids that aren't mine, and I'm going to take care of them. What compelled that man to do that? He ain't your daddy. My testimony, Pastor Bob. I was dating a girl one time, and we were driving somewhere, and somehow we get in a conversation about him, and she says, well, he ain't your daddy. Dropped her off at the door. See you later. What's wrong? You're not the one for me. Because he ain't my daddy. Left. Now, what if I'd have just said, you know, well, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I'd have lost my testimony. See, because I committed myself to him as my father. And when you do that, you just don't get to put the brakes on and turn around and go the other way. You need to stay with the commitment you made. Amen. Stick with that commitment. I submit myself to you. You're my authority. You do it with your natural father, do it with your spiritual father. I submit to you. So what is your testimony? Have you lost your testimony somewhere along the way? Have you just forgotten what it is? Not just how you became a Christian, but why are you a Christian? What are you doing as a Christian? What are you telling people around you about being a Christian? What are you telling them about Christ, the Father? What is your testimony? This world wants you to lose your testimony. But I have not seen one word edited out. I've not seen God come back to the edit room and say, you know what? The world seems to be going this way, so I'm going to erase some stuff. I'm going to tear some pages out. I'm going to change some of the ways I put things in place. I'm going to change the whole dynamic of the family value system. I'm going to change. He hadn't changed a single thing. I hadn't changed a word, Miss Susan. He hasn't changed one concept. Forever. What's God's testimony? He stands by his testimony. I always think of that Pastor David Ring. He had the cerebral, cerebral palsy. He's up there preaching. And he looks out. I've got cerebral palsy. What's your problem? <laughs> what is our problem? We get busy. We get caught up in the day. We tend to bow down to man's thinking and man's ideas we're supposed to walk the other way but no don't do that 
Don't do that. Stand up for God. If you ain't going to stand up for no one else, at least stand up for God. He stands in the gap for us. Why won't you stand in the gap for Him? Be a living testimony for Him. Don't lose your testimony. Just as I could have lost that vehicle repair, I could have lost it. I could have lost it on that dude. He was looking at a bad day if I'd have lost it on him. But he would have won because I would have lost my testimony. Well, Charles, you're supposed to be understanding, compassionate. Yeah, but I'm the one who's out of the money. You're supposed to be understanding and compassionate. Yeah, but, you know, I didn't do nothing wrong. You're supposed to be understanding and compassionate. What's your testimony? I'll give you another quick one so you can feel the pain a little bit. I'm not going to say who, but I have a family member who owes me money. But he don't owe me any money anymore. He thinks he still does. We talk about money, Pastor Bob. I helped my family member out with some money. I don't even remember what the amount is anymore. I let it go. But do you know if I still had it on my little ink pad at home, tacked onto my chalkboard, I'd have lost my testimony. He'd have been another one I lost it on. <laughs> and I wouldn't have got it back for a while if I would have. But you've got to give it up. You've got to loosen some things, just like that coconut. You've got to loosen some things to keep others. You've got to loosen that thing to keep your testimony. That thing is temporary. I kept on making money after I gave him money. I didn't lose no money. I kept on keeping on. But if I'd have stuck right there, I'm going to stand here until I get all my money back from you. I ain't moving. Where'd everybody go? I'm over here and they left me. They walking out their testimony, and I lost mine. But see, don't lose your testimony. Now listen, I'm not saying there are things you have to do, you have to take care of, but I'm going to tell you this, nine times out of ten, it ain't worth it, and it ain't worth losing your testimony. Let it go. Yeah, but they said, let it go. Yeah, but they, they let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You want to end up in prison? Lose your testimony. You want to end up dead? Lose your testimony. You want to end up with no friends? Lose your testimony. You want to be bouncing around from church to church to church to church? Lose your testimony. You will. You will be in a fog. But I say fall in love with your testimony. Be what your testimony is. And again, we're not in, these, we're not in the perfect body yet. And yeah, we're going to boo-boo. That's the first John 1, 9. But that's okay. Just don't lose your testimony. That's not the end of the world. Yeah, but I got this splinter in my finger, and it's just bothering you. Yeah, okay, that's just a splinter in your finger, man. We're talking about eternal life. Yeah. You're talking about walking out eternity, man. Eternity. Who wants to hold on to their testimony in here? Who wants to tell others about their testimony? Hold on to it. Tell them about it. Don't lose it. Don't follow the ways of this world and lose your testimony. You know, black is black, white is white, but the world wants you to see it all as gray. But no, we don't see it as gray. We see truth for truth. There is rest in the truth, and there's torment in the lie. And if you want to be tormented, keep on living in the lie. But if you want truth, peace, rest, do it God's way. And when you mess up doing it God's way and you step out of bounds, just put the brake on, stop, repent, 
Say, Lord, help me. Don't even try to say, I'm going to change. Just, you ain't going to change nothing. You might do okay for 10 minutes. And then you're going to go right back down. But if you say, Lord, will you change me? Lord, will you do it? Lord, I'm like a babe. Will you hold my hand? And don't let go, Lord. The Lord's going to say to you, I ain't going to let you go. Just you don't let go of me. I'll never let you go. Don't lose your testimony. There's a God. And he manifested himself as a man. And he shed his sacrificial blood for me and all of you. That is the testimony. And I live by it. This body will fall away, and my spirit's going to keep on living by it. And for eternity, I'm going to live by it. The one relationship that will never fail. The one true relationship that is always going to be true to you. Rest in the fact that God loves you, even where you're at. I don't care where you're at in your life. He loves you. He loves the sinner. He loves the saint. His love is not bound by me or you. He has it just flowing out. And all we got to do is dive right into it. That's all you got to do. I encourage you. To reflect on your testimony. What was your conversion? But then go beyond the conversion and what am I doing with my conversion? And then go a little step further of how can I share the gospel? And then go a step further and realize there's only one gospel. There's only one truth. And I serve a God who is unfailing. What's your testimony? Testimony. What is your testimony? We going to walk this testimony out? You're going to have a different little insight into your testimony now? Not just going to put it on the coat rack and leave it there, right? Not going to let CNN tell you what to do with it, right? We're going to put it on, walk in it all the time, bathe in it. Explore it. Tell people about it. And when they think they're the lowest thing, say, no, let me tell you something. Once I was low. And I submitted. I submitted. See, it isn't just about asking. It's about that submission. You have to submit. You have to give up. You don't win unless you submit in this thing. You have to submit first to gain that everlasting love affair that's going to carry you through it. Don't be blind by paying attention to the tricks of the enemy. He can't change a word in that book. He wants to. He wants you to think he can. He's got some pastors saying the stuff they shouldn't be. He's got some denominations going all kind of ways. But uh uh-uh, if you're a true gospel-believing Christian, you are not moved. You are not shaken. I stand on the word of my testimony. I will not be shaken. So I hope this encouraged you today. I hope it got deep down inside. We all need it. We all need to know what our testimony is. We need to be willing to live out our testimony. Thank God for our testimony. And not be ashamed of our testimony. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, you give us everything we need. And it's just there for the taking, Lord. Lord, if we'll submit to you, just submit to you, it's there. And Lord, if we submit to you, then our hearts will change and we'll serve you. 
But we can't serve you not with submission. We've got to submit to you and then serve. And, Lord, we just ask that you clear our minds, clear our hearts, Lord, so we will be good servants for you, Lord. And that we'll walk this thing out, Lord, and we want to share our testimony. Not just how we were saved, but why and what we're doing with it. Other places we can't even talk and we about thank you, Lord, that you allow us to do that. In this country, we can still talk about a testimony, so why are our tongues tied? Free our tongues, Lord, to share our testimony. It is there, and we have every opportunity to share it every single day of our lives. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.